Oh yeah, it's running good. The old original jack traps, so. All right. Let's see if we've got one on. What's up everybody, so as you can tell, back out at the uh, Salmon Lake I go to every year. One of my favorite lakes in the state to go to. Not a whole lot of big ones in here, but good numbers, and that's really what I like to go after. A few big ones, but I like a lot of action throughout the day, so. Back out here, as you can see, we're nice. Nice warm weather, and there is nobody else out here to compete with, so got the whole lake to myself as it looks like today. So, gonna be a pretty action packed video, hopefully. Gonna get into some salmon, and maybe if we're really lucky, we'll get into an Arctic char. And I'll get into that in a little bit, so stick around and see how the day goes. Is just on shore, uh, getting a little bit of water in, and not only do I have one flag up over here, I got another. On my old original jack trap. So, gonna go over there and uh, hopefully have that thing running and get a couple of salmon. So, let's see how this goes. Oh. Check this one first, then go over to the one closer to shore. That one, you know, it shouldn't have been a wind flag. The wind's been pretty consistently coming from this direction. So, ideally, we'll have two salmon on, or maybe an Arctic char on one of them. That wouldn't be wouldn't be bad at all. So this right here, as you guys know, is my, oh yeah, it's running good. My old original jack trap, so. All right. Let's see if we've got one on. Oh yeah, that we do. All right, doesn't feel too big, but hey. I'm hoping it's a salmon. Oh, well, it's starting to fight fairly good, actually. Like I said earlier in the video, guys, I'll take numbers over size. I mean, I mean, who doesn't like a big salmon, but. Oh, oh, yeah. That's actually a pretty good fish. All right. Actually taking line out on me. All right. See, the key of these, it's kind of like uh, fly fishing in a way. Oh yeah, you want to tire them out because you got pretty light leaders. Oh yeah, it's actually a pretty good fish. See every year the, oh yeah, just let them go, let them go. No need to rush it, you know, this is the first trap I ever got that actually got me into ice fishing. When I was a uh, Cub Scout, <laughs> well, well over a decade and a half ago, I um, was part of, there's a big group there and a game warden came in. He did a Maine Fur Bearers presentation and when you guessed the um, right uh, pelt, you got a prize. And he had a bunch of ice fishing prizes at the time and no one could guess a beaver round pelt as coming from a beaver. So I ended up winning the prize and I got this jack trap right here. And ever since it's propelled my winter ice fishing obsession pretty good so yeah I'm not gonna keep anything today I'm just just here to you know have fun hook into some fish and oh yeah that's a pretty good fish I wonder if it's a wild one this lake has it's one of the four na native landlocked salmon lakes in the entire state of Maine Let's see. oh yeah that's a good fish that's a really good fish. Look at that, everybody. Yes. That's what I came here for. All right. So we're gonna get a quick pick with him and, oh, I need to get my pliers. Cause, a quick pick. Looks like it's a nice male. I believe so, yeah, look at the head shape. Remember. quick so I want that hook out of him as fast as possible so like I said guys I'm not here to keep any I'm just here to get a couple like that and remember I know it's winter I know it can be cold but make sure when you're fishing oh okay so he swallowed the hook so the right thing to do in this situation is cut it so hooks today are biodegradable so do the sporting thing make sure to keep your hands wet 
remember you're here to protect the fish got to make sure you're doing everything you can for him so just get a nice look at him we'll get a release oh there he goes all right perfect so salmon one down i'll go quickly run over this way and we'll see if we've got a fish on over there all right everybody so on our way to check this trap out see if we got a fish on so we'll have to try a new leader on that one minute i'll show you guys a nice little setup and how i do it but first and foremost let's see if this trap right here right on shore has got something I think so. Get the GoPro running and we'll uh, delve into this a little bit further. All right, let's see if this is got a fish. I don't see him on bottom, but uh, black lines out. Maybe a hit and run. Yeah. Took the bait. <laughs> no kidding. All right, well. We'll get this rebaited and uh, get it back in the water. So I'll show you guys how to do that. So got a cooler from Darren. These things are really convenient. Just kind of lift them up, grab a smelt. So you don't even have to get your hands wet. Just kind of pick them out and it's really easy to grab them. So just take them right here, hook them just in front of the dorsal fin. Just, you just want to go skin, skin side. You don't want to hook them real bad because you don't want their action to be bad in the water. You know, just kind of dead and not twitching because a lot of predatory fish, <coughs> particularly salmonids, they're attracted, they're, they hunt by not only scent but sight. So if you have something that's like rapidly darting around in the water like a rainbow smelt will, and man, yeah, he's very feisty. You can feel him really pulling on the uh, reel. That they'll come in really quick when they... Um, see them moving around and struggling especially with a red hook which is something I like to use and this one should be in pretty shallow water so it could be a salmon it might even be a brook trout they are allegedly in here but not a lot of them and the key thing is when you're running by shore make sure your reel is running parallel to it because that reduces the amount of tension that you have in your line so when the fish preferably salmon come in and go after it they won't feel tension, so they won't be likely to spit the hook or know that they're hooked in general. So that's how I set it. And now we're going to go back to my OG trap and get that rehooked. So I figured, um, just in case people have this similar situation, I'm sure a lot of people do. Um, I'll give you a little demo on what to do with fish took a lot of line, you had to cut the hook, you got a bunch on the ice. Just some little tips to help prevent a lot of mess from happening. So the first thing I like to do is find the end of your line, start pulling up like that. Pull it out to one end here. Just kind of like get it sorted so you're not bunching it up. Then go from your weight. And just start walking backwards. And this way when you pull your line out, when you go to reel it back in, it'll be completely straight. So you won't be catching on the ice or uh, knotting it up. So it's an easy way to keep your line sorted. And, uh, you know, another way to figure out, hey, how long did your salmon or fish in general, whatever you caught, run. So we'll do this. I don't think we have too much line left. Just got to watch the reel. Yep, and there we go. So that salmon ran all the way from just a little past the weight all the way over to the trap. So what we're going to do so I don't lose the weight. And also, remember, even if your state doesn't require it, don't use lead sinkers. They are very bad for your aquatic wildlife. Make sure you get tin or other non-toxic split shot if you want to weigh down your uh, leaders. And just fishing tackle in general, if you tie your own flies or, you know, live weight with like, like live bait in the open water. Just use tin, you know, help protect your aquatic ecosystem and the fish you like to catch. So then from here, start reeling it in. Just kind of walk with your line. And just kind of keep reeling it right until you get to about the leader. So, from this point on, what I like to do is go to the end here. You can tell I usually like to fish them, well, obviously, a little bit further up the hook than that. So, I'll move my weight to 
about maybe eight inches past where the hook's gonna be. And what I like to use, these right here, little gamakatsu size eight. They're small, good for, you know, brook trout, salmon, because especially salmon, because they have smaller mouths and you wanna make sure that you don't have too big of a hook, not only not to damage your bait, but to reduce injury to the fish itself. Because again, if you like just release, catch and release fishing like I do, you wanna make sure that they have a better chance of not only surviving when they go back down the hole, but also being able to continue to eat and live long term. What you do is just do a knot up here. The other thing I like about these uh, octopus hooks, aside from the shape, which I have very few losses on compared to like J hooks and other styles, but they're red. And when you have a bait fish, whether it's a smelt, shiner, or whatever else you're putting down the hole, it has a little bit of red above it they'll keen in on that and they'll see not only is it struggling but they'll think it's bleeding so they'll think it's an injured fish even more so and they'll really go after it and want to eat that thing so it's another little handy tip to have especially you want to increase your odds of having a successful day on the ice now this right here is also fluorocarbon so a little now right here and the key thing is here with fluorocarbon, you want to wet it a little bit, otherwise the friction will damage the line when you're tying your knots. So, the way to do it is either stick it in the water or just stick it in your mouth for just a couple seconds. Get nice and moistened down. Cinch it. Oh, I don't... I think I messed that knot up a little bit. Oh, oh here we go. Then, try to make sure this goes above the hook so it doesn't pop off on me. There you have it. So, got the hook, got your weight. What now? So, obviously, the thing you want to do is trim it because that little excess tab on your line. They can feel that, they can see it. You wanna make sure that they think that your bait is as natural in the water as possible. So clip it, make sure. Don't let that go on the ice again. Won't be good for your fish. Now you've got your leader. So before I put the bait on, I'll show you a little tip and trick that I have. You'll obviously see I have two different types of nylon line uh, past the leader. So I like the black stuff because when you're fishing really deep, sometimes you wanna have a little bit more than just your leader down. And that black line's a lot harder to spot than something that's neon. And also, just to kind of like gauge how, if your fish has really run far, you know, having different types of line on there is good. So I like to have orange, uh, neon orange. It's easy to see. You can track it in the water pretty well. But you can really use any color. I know a lot of them will come with like tan. You can get a pink, yellow even, blue, green. Just something that's easy to spot in the water so you can kind of see where in the ice they are. That way, you're not rubbing your line against like a jagged edge and reduces your risk of losing the fish. So we got that, just like before. Here we go right over here. Let's pull a little bit of line out. And a little cooler right here. And since it's pretty warm out today, I'm putting some ice in there to keep them from getting too warm because smelts are also a cold water fish. Really the only cold water bait fish we have in the state. So just like before, hook them right behind the back dorsal fin. Dropping down the hole. See right there is the best bait fish for winter fishing for landlocked salmon and basically any other cold water game fish in the state. You know, lake trout, a lot of waters when you have, um, now naturally most lake trout waters, they don't have smelt in them since the majority of uh, landlocked rainbow smelt occur in coastal drainage waters. So if you go to like Northern Maine and you see like fisheries reports for the different bodies of water and there's smelt in them, they've been introduced. So naturally in those types of waters, if it weren't for smelt, lake trout would eat basically any, a whole assortment of freshwater fish near the benthic levels of lakes and ponds. So like sculpins, suckers, um, whitefish especially. Uh, nowadays with the introduction of rainbow smelt, um, in a lot of these waters, oh, I keep putting the trigger on this, just like they become just like salmon and they'll start honing in almost exclusively on smelt 
And whether it's just like an ease of being able to hunt them because they're the large schooling fish or whatever other reason, they're a very valuable bait fish to have because they really like eating them, you know. Probably likely just to ease of hunting. Um, because again, there's a lot of them in one concentrated area because they school versus like whitefish or sculpins, which typically are solitary species. So they're really great fish. They'll hone in on them. They'll obviously they'll smell them. They have a lot better sense of smell than a lot of people give them credit for. So remember, if you're going ice fishing, you obviously check the regs to make sure you can use live bait or you know bait at all. And uh, yeah, this is what to use here in Maine. So. We'll get that in, get some more ice in the cooler, keep those guys cool, and uh, yeah, we'll wait for another flag to pop up and see how the rest of the day goes. All right, everybody, so got the trap set in the water. Got my warden trap right there, along with my other two jack traps that direction. And then closer to shore, I've got a couple more um, my other traps. Got my really old 40 up, and then one of my two fray bills. So ideally, we'll get some salmon here and uh, maybe get some uh, trout. I know they're wild in here but there's not too terrible many of them maybe just maybe we'll look out and get an arctic char so hopefully today we'll yield some results so while i'm watching for some traps just hanging out on shore I'm gonna have some homemade donut holes a little bit of water and i ended up moving one of my traps further out that last one in that line i'll probably go move it over that direction try to get a little bit deeper and try to go for a char today now they got my salmon knocked off, might as well try for another rare fish in the lake, one I've been trying to catch here for a very, very long time. So, I'll get one of these down and uh, yeah, we'll go relocate that trap out and maybe get another fish today. Alright, so right here I'm just sitting a little bobber, or kind of a bobber, they're not really meant to, they don't float, they just kind of like mark your depth of your line so if you get a fish you can easily reel it right back in and it won't change what depth you set it to so move this trap out from where i originally had it fishing it pretty deep right here in this spot and the goal here is ideally this whole basin of this chunk of the lake is pretty deep so typically the char in this particular body of water are confined to one small spot in here in a very very deep hole but once the winter months hit more of the water column becomes cold and accessible to them so biologically from some research i've done in the winter they should be able to access up to well maybe not in the winter but like in the summer months typically at least they theoretically should be able to access up to 40 feet of depth as shallow as that but so i mean in the winter they should be able to go pretty much anywhere in the lake just like lake trout because well everything's cold there's abundant dissolved oxygen so theoretically they should be able to be anywhere in here but because of the presence of a constantly stocked lake trout population in the lake things are probably gonna be a little bit different plus this is also the only body of water in the entire state of maine where you can legally ice fish for the species where it's confirmed to still be present so Really, there's not a whole lot of information to go on as to how to target the species. Um, there's been some historical info from places like Floods Pond back when that, back before that was a Bangor Water District uh, source of water, which really isn't a good idea if you think about it, seeing how rare the fish are. But they used to be a body of water they would fish for Arctic char. They'd take pieces of shrimp and uh, fish that under the ice, and that used to work pretty good. But aside from that, there's really no other information to go off of on how to target them in the winter. So. We'll just kind of go like lake trout only downsize it a bit so got a small little mosquito hook size 10 just like the salmon traps so pretty much just gonna fish this like i would whitefish only i'm not gonna use a live smelt because the ones in here aren't known to be that big so what i'm gonna do is i'll chop that one up probably hook the guts onto the hook try to get some scent in the water i mean primarily they're insectivores in here but they caught one that was up to i think 15 16 inches so theoretically there should be something big enough to take this and hopefully get through the ice so I'll get this rigged up, get back to shore, and hopefully that flag will pop up here in a bit. So we got the oh, got the Arctic char set in the water, so just gonna have to set that up, let it wait, you know. Hopefully it'll marinate in the water on the bottom and get a char on it. Could also get a lake trout, I mean they'll hit the same thing, just use the head and the entrails of the small smelt to hopefully draw them in, so it should be big it should be small enough for a char to hit but hey you won't know until the flag pops up and if one's on the end of it so 
hopefully we'll get a char and show you guys that in the lake but until then just have to wait on shore and wait for the next flag well everybody the uh shore trap went off again so gonna get the bait and see if we got a fish all right let's get it all right well just got to the trap and oh yeah something's yep it's off to the side so something's on there uh, nope yeah nope hit and run hit and run dang it <laughs> jig it for a second see if anything comes back I think that smelt just might have been a little bit too big yeah just a hit and run there's no weight just the smelt and very light line <laughs> so well get this thing rebaited and uh, hopefully get a fish on it up everybody so gonna wrap it up today starting to get some uh, pretty dark clouds in and i'd rather not get rained on when i walk back to the car so flags have been down for a good bit so i'm gonna call it now you know just came out here for a short trip but anyway as you can see not too bad of a day you know never had anyone else out here so I had the whole entire north basin to myself so pretty happy about that but anyway guys hope you enjoyed the video and I'll try to get a couple more in uh, before the season's out and there's no more ice so you can tell it's starting to melt he's 50 degree temps haven't exactly been good for ice formation, so probably gonna get an early spring, get some more fly fishing videos, but hey, I'm just happy to be out in the water and finally get a salmon of my old jack trap. So thanks again for watching everybody, and until next time, tight lines.